Hello and welcome to part two of the extrude curve command. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the perspective window just like I did last time and we're going to repeat that extrude curve command. Once again it can be found under solid extrude planar curve or you can type in extrude curve CRV or we can find it right over here in the uh, closed planar curve. You can also find it up here as well in um, some of these menus under the solid tools. But let's go ahead and go back to our standard. Oh, you can find it right there. There we go. All right, I'm going to go back to my standard view. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the extrude curve command. And this time we're going to take a look at some of our options. Okay, so I will click on extrude closed planar curve and I will hit enter and I will begin to drag it up but you notice so far we've we've discussed direction both sides we have not discussed the solid equals no or the delete input no alright so if I select delete input as yes I'm gonna go ahead and run that again once I extrude this curve that curve will disappear so watch this I'm gonna go ahead and select extrude, extrude closed planar curve select my curve hit enter and then right up here where it says delete input I'm gonna say yes and I'm gonna click and I can dr just click and drag my object away and there is no curve that results right as opposed to if I select this circle here and I hit enter and delete input is selected as no drag it up I've got my object I drag my object away by clicking it and dragging it you'll notice that the circle is still here okay now the other thing and I'm just going to go ahead and draw myself another quick rectangle here that we haven't taken a look at is the possibility of leaving it open or closed okay so I'm going to go ahead select extrude curve select my curve hit enter and then this time where it says solid equals yes I'm going to go ahead and leave it as no. All right. And as I do that, you'll notice that I have this really interesting looking thing that maybe is a cube, but is maybe missing sides, right? The reason it looks like it's missing sides, yet I can go ahead and surround it and the sides that are not facing me disappear, but the ones that are facing me are, is that um, Rhino, the, the way the render settings are right now is it's, it's set to show only the front surface not the back surface so it's not showing the back surface but it also basically does not have um, it's not closed right so if I were to go to our wireframe here you can't actually tell one, which one of these is open which one of these is closed right if I go to my rendered and again hard to tell in the rendered view what's going on again that's why I typically like to stay in the ghosted view alright now if you happen to have extruded a curve and it's not open this is new to Rhino 6 it used to look quite a bit different um, you could barely see tell that there was missing a top so this is a good sort of indicator of whether you have a closed or an open cube you can select your object and if you type in cap CAP C A P and you hit enter you actually can turn your object into a solid right now interestingly enough if you create a solid using the cap command you're gonna get something a little bit different than if you create a solid using the extrude curve command right notice you've got some little lines here and then here you don't all right and the reason for that is this is a poly surface, right? This was a m poly surface, meaning many surface. This is a series of surfaces that were created by creating, um, well, an open surface and then capping it. And then this was a curve that was extruded into a solid, right? So they are, they're basically the same. They're both closed, which is very, very important, especially when we get into things like 3D printing. They're both closed, but they are very, very different objects, right? This is a valid extrusion. This is a poly, a poly surface. If I select this and I go over here to this little explosion and I explode it, 
this has now been exploded into something that has these lines in it. These lines are called isocurves or isoparms. Right? Now, this is now a series of separate objects, right? And they're not open, so I'm going to go ahead and clo hit Control-Z. And now I'm going to go ahead and join that by clicking on this little puzzle piece here. Oops, I didn't select them all. Use my crossing window and select it and join it. And now you'll notice that they both are these solid objects with isoparms in it. Once again, if I do the extrude curve command, and what I'm doing to make these the exact same height is I'm taking my snap and I'm pulling it up and I'm just clicking to the top of any object and by doing that it actually constrains the height. It's a pretty cool little trick but you notice no isoparms, isoparms, isoparms. Okay, so that's basically the cap command. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and I'll see you in the next lesson.